Although the Tibetan Spaniel arrived in America a little more than 20 years ago, its remarkable intelligence and affectionate nature have made the breed extremely popular. Prized for centuries in its native Tibet as a companion and watchdog, the Tibetan Spaniel was unknown in the West until the late 1800s, when the first specimen of the breed was brought to England. Even so, the first Tibetan Spaniel appeared in the United States only in 1965. The American Kennel Club approved the breed to compete in the non-sporting group January 1984. You'll be seeing many Tibetan Spaniels during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples, others are less so. But all are representative examples of the breed and will help your understanding of this oriental watchdog and companion. Now, let's begin. In general appearance, the Tibetan Spaniel is a small, active, alert dog with a well-balanced appearance. He is slightly longer in body than he is tall, rectangular rather than square. As for size in the Tibetan Spaniel, ideally both dogs and bitches should stand about 10 inches at the withers and will range between 9 to 15 pounds. Well-balanced are the key words. The Tibetan Spaniel should never appear long in body and low to the ground, nor short-backed and high on leg. This properly coated dog's proportions are correct, with the legs long enough to allow a rectangle of daylight beneath the body. Balance and proportion should be your primary guidelines. A symmetrical, pleasing animal typifies the Tibetan Spaniel. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Tibetan Spaniel with the head. It is small in proportion to the body and is carried proudly like this. It gives the dog an aristocratic appearance. The skull is slightly rounded and is joined to the muzzle by a slight but definite stop. The muzzle itself is medium in length, straight and blunt with cushioning. It should also be free from wrinkles the dog should never appear down-faced. This muzzle is incorrect. It's too pointed and weak. The wrinkling seen on this muzzle is also incorrect, and the muzzle is too short. It gives the dog a harsh look. Although the muzzle should be well cushioned, there should be no sign of wrinkling. This correct muzzle is medium in length, blunt, and in proportion to the length of skull. This dog's ratio of muzzle to skull is excellent. This skull is too domed. From the front on this correct head, you can see the slightly domed skull. It is broadest at eye level and should not fall away under the eyes. The nose should be black like this. The blunt appearance of the muzzle is due in part to the slightly undershot jaws. This lends an impression of depth and width to the chin. Slightly undershot means that the upper incisors should fit neatly inside and touch the lower incisors. Full dentition is desired. The teeth should not show when the mouth is closed, nor should the tongue protrude. This level bite is also permissible, as long as the depth and width of chin are evident. This scissors bite is undesirable. An overshot mouth is definitely incorrect and should be penalized. The Tibetan Spaniel's keen, intelligent expression is due in part to correctly shaped and placed eyes. The eyes are oval in shape, medium in size, and are set fairly wide apart. They should be forward-looking, like these are, giving an ape-like expression. The eyes should be dark brown in color, bright and expressive. The eye rims should be black. Liver, or putty-colored pigmentation, is a fault. These large, round, prominent eyes are not desirable. 
you can see how they detract from this dog's expression. Large, full eyes are faulty, as are light-colored eyes. Ears are medium in size and set fairly high on the head, just below the top of the skull, like this. They're pendant and well-feathered in adult dogs. There can be a slight lift from the skull before the ears fold over, but they should not fly, that is, lift too high off the skull. These ears are set too high. But these ears, which fly out to the side, are not correct. Equally undesirable are erect ears, or ears which are too large and low set, like these. Here again is the desired Tibetan Spaniel look. Alert, watchful, intelligent. You can see here that the male head is masculine, but never coarse. The female head is finer throughout, with a softer expression. Now let's consider the Tibetan Spaniel's neck and body. The neck is moderately short, strong, and well set on. It is covered with a mane, or shawl, of longer hair, which is more pronounced in dogs than in bitches. What about this dog? The neck appears too short and heavy, and is out of proportion to the rest of the dog's body. This correct, well-placed neck allows the dog to carry his head high, with the typical proud carriage of this breed. Note that the mane may not develop until after the dog is two years of age and may be a lighter color than the rest of the dog. The shoulders are well placed and laid back. The upper arm should have corresponding angulation so that the front legs are well under the dog. The elbow will then fall on a line directly below the withers. These correct shoulders will help the dog move with a brisk action which is a characteristic of the breed. This dog has a well-laid back shoulder blade, but his short, straight upper arm throws the front assembly out of balance. But these shoulders appear to be too straight, as does this short blade and long, straight upper arm. This may also result in inefficient movement in front. These correctly laid back shoulders are desirable. The forelegs are firm at the shoulder, with moderate bone. From the front, you can see that the forelegs are slightly bowed. This is typical of the breed. You can also see that the chest is moderately wide and fairly deep. These forelegs are incorrect. They're bowed too much and are out of the elbow. Although the Tibetan Spaniel's forelegs should be slightly bowed, this much curve is faulty. This dog is too clunky, with too heavy bone. This young dog's forequarters are correctly built, with a moderate amount of bone and a slight bow in the forelegs. From the side, see how the front assembly is correct. The pasterns are only slightly sloping. The Tibetan Spaniel is hare-footed. Indeed, he is the only native Tibetan breed with this shape of foot. The feet should be small and neat. The feathering between the toes will often extend beyond the foot like this. Note that small cat feet are faulty in this breed. Dew claws may be removed. As mentioned earlier, the Tibetan Spaniel's body is slightly longer than the height at the withers, but only slightly. This dog's body proportions are correct. While this dog is clearly too long in body and too low on leg. This one appears too high on leg, too short in body, 
and square. The Tibetan Spaniel's body is slightly longer than the height at the withers, like this. This makes the Tibetan Spaniel rectangular in appearance, rather than square. See how this dog's body is well ribbed, with the ribs carried well back toward the strong loin. The top line is level. This top line dips behind the withers and roaches toward the rear. It is incorrect. The tail is one of the Tibetan Spaniel's most distinguishing features. The tail is set high, like this, and is richly plumed. It's carried in a gay curl over the back when the dog is moving or at attention. At rest, the tail may drop. What about this dog's tail? The set is too low. Remember, the tail should be an extension of the top line at the end of the spine. This dog's tail is too short and straight. This correct tail is carried properly in a gay curl. See how the curl is over the back. Remember that the tail need not be carried over the back when the dog is standing. In the show ring, attempts to hold the tail in this position are not necessary. The standard only requires that the tail curl over the back when the dog is moving. The hindquarters should be well developed and strong, like these are. See how the hocks are well let down. The thighs should be well developed and the stifles moderately angulated at the joint. From the rear, the buttocks are well rounded and the thighs are strong. See how the low hocks are straight and parallel. These long cow hocks are faulty, as are these straight stifles. Note that there is no hock definition either. This correct rear assembly is well made and strong, with the angulation matching the angulation of the front, giving the dog the required well-balanced appearance. Now let's discuss the Tibetan Spaniel's coat. It's a double coat and should feel silky in texture. The coat is smooth on the face and on the front of the legs and is of moderate length on the body, like this. The ears and the back of the legs should be nicely feathered, while the hair on the tail and buttocks is longer. The mane on the neck should be apparent, although again, this may not develop fully until two years of age and will be more prominent in dogs than in bitches. This dog's heavy coat is not desirable. A longer coat with obvious trailing fringes is not correct. A curly or wavy coat is also not correct. A scissored appearance is undesirable. The Tibetan Spaniel is a natural breed. There should be no cosmetic alterations to the coat. The whiskers should not be removed. The coat should not be given any more importance than any other point. A natural appearance is most desirable. Nothing more or less. As for color, all colors and mixtures of colors are allowed. Colors take in the entire range, from white to black, including fawns, sables, party colors, and black and tans. Markings, including white markings on the feet, are of no importance, with any marking or combination of markings permissible. Don't let an individual color preference or attractive markings affect your evaluation of the total dog. While markings may catch the eye, it's the total dog that should form the basis for your judging. The Tibetan Spaniel should be quick moving. This does not mean restricted steps, nor does it mean an excessively fast gait. The Tibetan Spaniel should not race around the ring. His gait should be straight, free, and positive. This dog is moving well, his forelegs reaching well out in front, 
and the hind legs driving powerfully from behind. From the front, you can see how the forelegs are carried straight forward, swinging neither in nor out. The slight bow in the forelegs should not prevent the dogs having a straight moving forward gait. And from the rear, the hind legs follow in the same plane as the forelegs, with the hocks remaining straight and parallel. Here again is correct movement, firm and positive. The Tibetan Spaniel should seem like he's covering a lot of ground in a straight, even manner. The Tibetan Spaniel's gay, assertive temperament is a large part of his quickly won popularity. Although he may be somewhat aloof towards strangers, he is devoted to his family and is trusting of other dogs and people. He should never appear nervous or apprehensive in the show ring. It's not surprising that the Tibetan Spaniel has won a devoted following in such a relatively short time, or that this affectionate, highly intelligent dog holds such a secure place for the future.